starts with sales growth uh, are the big movers and not the one with the earnings growth, right? And basically in the short term. So when you are in market for a long period of time, and I've been in market for 24 years now, uh, you discover that there are periods when your age of buying breakout is not going to work. Or EP also, episodic pivot doesn't work in all market conditions. There are conditions where it works. Situational awareness, I think, is the key component to being successful more than anything else. Welcome everybody to the Entrepreneur's Podcast. Uh, we have a very special guest today. And uh, just to dive in, could you share a little bit about your background and what got you into the market? But first, let's start with what was your background before you even started trading? Uh, before I started trading, I was uh, in a corporate life. I was, uh, I was uh, uh, vice president marketing for FedEx in India and before that DHL in India. So my background is basically management. I did my MBA, after that I worked in advertising and in marketing. So I was basically into management. Then uh, when I came in to US in around 97, 98, that was the dot-com boom. And as soon as I came in, I was hired by a startup as a chief operating officer and uh, I worked for a startup for a couple of years and that's where I got interested in the market basically. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, because it's very interesting coming from that background in marketing to transition to a, a field of investment and trading because they're, they're not very like correlated fields, uh, but you found massive success in, in trading. So to dive into trading, what was like the initial challenges you faced when you first got started in the market? Uh, the initial challenges are similar to any trader who enters the market, which is like, you, know, you don't have a set methodology. You really don't understand the market. You don't understand how to make money in the market, basically, or how do traders make money in the market. So it can be a challenge. And it was a challenge, basically. The first three years was a challenging period. Uh, and uh, then, uh, Subsequently, once you understand how the market works and how traders actually make money, uh, it becomes relatively easy because you find your edges and you specialize in your edges and you continue to build on your edges. Okay, very cool. So in particular, what was the, the thing that you saw that was reoccurring in the market that gave you your first edge when you're trading? Uh, so one of the things which I discovered, like two things which I discovered very early in my trading and which made a lot of difference to my trading. One was like, you know, the tendency of stocks to move in a sharp burst of three to five days, uh, which is a very demonstrative tendency of stock markets, which is where like you know, if sudden buying comes into any stock, then that buying persists for three to five days where the stock will continue to make eight to 20% move. Uh, in a, that short period of time. So that was something which I discovered very early in my trading. So that allowed me to build swing trading strategies around buying breakouts. Uh, the second thing which I discovered very early uh, and which made a lot of difference was uh, what I call now the episodic pivot as a setup, which is basically what is called as uh, in a, the financial literature or in the uh, financial field as post earning announcement drift, which is when a stock comes out with the earnings, which is substantially better or substantially bad than what the market was expecting, then the stock makes a big move in the direction of that earning surprise. So that was the starting point or that was the basic ages, uh, which I found. And then subsequently, now I have several more ages which I have discovered and which I have perfected over the years. But the starting point was like these two ages, which is a momentum burst and post earning announcement drift or episodic pivot. Okay, very nice. So when like a beginner trader, trader finds an edge like that, what were some of the things that you did to perfect that edge? Like I, I've been a follower for about a year now and you talk a lot about like going through the universe of stocks and documenting mm -hmm. that so like can you deep dive into like what what you were doing to master those setups yeah so what i did is once i discovered like an, that there is a something like momentum burst 
I wanted to study momentum bus, so I got hold of 40 years of data of the stock market and I looked at every stock which has made a 25% move in a month, uh, month by month going by like an and then compiled uh, patterns from those uh, studies. So it was a deep dive, which was an extensive deep dive. And from that study, uh, I discovered some of the nuances of doing it. I discovered what was the likely uh, conditions before this kind of a momentum burst happens. So what should I be looking at for those conditions? I looked at how the move progresses, what happened on first day, what happens on second day, what happens on third, fourth or fifth day, and when you should be out of the move, what happens in the moves which work, what happens in the moves which don't work, why do some moves work so well, why some moves don't work, what is the capitalization of the stocks on which it works, what is the price point. So extensively deep study helped me like eliminate the bad trades basically and also to understand and to be able to identify this situation in real life uh, in the market. So that was a, one of the things which I did basically, which is a deep dive kind of technology or technique which I used. And on the earnings side, again, I did the same thing, but there I was not interested in just looking at it to 20% moves kind of a thing. So I studied every stock which has doubled in a short period of time or went up 200, 300%. And then I looked at what was the earnings, what was the news, what triggered that particular kind of a uh, reaction to that earnings news and uh, that kind of a deep insight into your age is what I see recurring thing in traders who are successful that uh, they have invested significant amount of time in understanding a small age and then magnifying that age and if you don't have that uh, kind of a deep study then you lack the conviction to trade the same method because uh, second-hand conviction is very difficult uh, for traders to get. Okay. So specifically within those edges that you are trading, like mm -hmm. what, what would you classify them as? Would you say it's a range bound strategy? Would you say it's a breakout strategy? Like what specifically uh, would you call the things that you're trading? Uh, there are a lot of things which I'm trading currently, basically, uh, like and I do have like and currently I do trade uh, two ways, like in a one way in which I trade is basically using discretion. Uh, so I have some discretionary edges uh, and I also have uh, there is a parallel process which we uh, I have a company which like and basically is doing automated trading now and the ages which we have discovered in the automated trading are sort of different from the ages which I do as a discretionary means there is some overlap but they are different ages. So in the discretionary trading the primary thing which I am trading is what is momentum burst which is a short term swing trading method basically. Uh, then I trade uh, episodic pivot but what episodic pivot in the common like in its very popular method are popularized by a lot of traders ex stock B traders or traders who uh, were members of stock B. Uh, but the pro common understanding of episodic pivot which is there in the public domain versus what I actually trade nowadays is slightly different because I discovered a lot more ages in episodic pivot compared to what I was doing say 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So I have multiple ages generated around episodic pivot uh, which are like you know, basically various different kinds of flavors of uh, uh, news plays basically. And then I also trade a setup called stock simply, which is just a short term, uh, one day kind of a setup where if a stock has a news and it is likely to go up for that particular day, uh, then I will trade that particular stock for that particular day because it's a free money, right? Uh, then I uh, have like kind of basically a setup around anticipation, which is based on uh, volatility. Whenever the volatility is low, uh, then the stock tends to, uh, any periods of low volatility resolves itself into a period of uh, breakout or a breakdown, whichever way. So I have, have an anticipation as one of the age which I develop. Then there is a reversal, uh, which is more like a mean reversion kind of an age where like an, I look for reversals under certain market, market conditions. Like all ages are market condition specific. There is currently, uh, when we are shooting this particular video, uh, the breakouts are working very well, right? Uh, that's like a, because the market is favoring that style or like episodic rewards are working very well or the, some of the uh, 
other episode if you are kind of method which i am trading uh, they are do- doing very well currently uh, while there was a period when uh, reversals were working very well like in a couple of weeks ago or months ago and then there are periods when you have like anticipation set of not working at all so uh, so i have different ages uh, reversals is one um, anticipation then breakouts then like a the episodic pivot based which is a large umbrella of ages which are around that particular things that is on the discretionary side uh, on the discretionary side also because i don't only really trade short term i also trade the longer term things i have some of the other ages which is like an a uh, the stocks with uh, what i call finding sell stars which are like stocks which have extraordinary sales growth basically which are growing sales very rapidly because uh, my research shows that stocks with sales growth uh, are the big movers and not the one which are earnings growth right and basically in the short term so that's one other age which is there and i have a method which is like an uh, which looks for stocks which have a, a, you know, sales growth i also have an um, uh, age around trading stocks which i ipo in the last 10 years and also which have a capitalization below 10 billion so there is a bunch of means these are not independent ages they are traded as a basket of age basically so that's another thing which i do and uh, uh, on the other side which is like our uh, automated kind of a thing uh, the thing which we are really been very successful in terms of which are developing as ages is around this concept of persistency so there is this entire concept of uh, the structural thing which we are build ages and we have 17 ages which we have built around it uh, are all related to persistency of move so we track persistency of moves across various time frames uh, and uh, then look at stocks uh, which have broken the persistency pattern which might s- suggest that that persistency pattern is no more valid so there might be a trend change or if the persistency pattern is very very persistent for a long period of time then we look at mean reversion or uh, entry on uh, any pullback in those stocks so there are a bunch of things 17 different flavors of that persistency uh, method which simultaneously uh, we are automating and trading as automated program basically okay that's really nice um So when you initially first started trading you had a very simple method called two lynch. So and and as you talked about recently or just now you have a lot more strategies in place. So what happened like from now to when you first started to where you started developing all these edges? Like what was there a need for it? Did you optimize your is it because of trade optimization? Did you see better returns off different strategies? What was the reason to continuously develop your edge over time? Uh see the, the, there are like an uh, uh, all ages are market situation specific, right? And uh, there are times when like an anticipation will work like a charm and there are times when reversal will work like a charm. So when you are in market for a long period of time and I've been in market for 24 years now, uh you discover that there are periods when your age of buying breakout is not going to work or ep also episodic pivot doesn't work in all market condition there are conditions where it works so then you want to fill the gaps uh, you want to trade methods which will suit that particular situational awareness so that was one of the fundamental thinking which led to developing new ages uh, but it's not even sometimes you develop age not because you are systematically looking for developing an age lot of my ages have come in because of the sheer amount of ideas which are generated on the stock b side right because the stock b sides attracts various types of traders and they don't necessarily follow my method and they bring in some new perspective like and i give you an example i have a age in trading high price stocks right that's an age which i dis- didn't discover there was a trader who joined the stock b side committee and when he presented that age to me it made enormous sense so all that i did is i perfected that age or like and you know, these reversals kind of a age is not my original idea i just picked it up from various stock b members who trade various kinds of like reversals kind of methods right so a uh, lot of age is developed by talking to other traders and observing other traders trading 
and also like an the one of the advantage which i have is like an i'm in touch with so many traders uh i as a result i get to know so many like i i know day traders i know scalpers i know position traders i know like an people who are in hedge fund i know people who are like in a trading big amount of money billionaires for billionaires uh, account they are trading as a result you get to know lot more or same way on the uh, other side which we are doing which is automated trading uh, we have members who have done automated trading uh, member which was featured in uh, even the market wizard book and on market wizard so uh, i can learn a lot from those people and as a result of that uh, ages i know lot more ages than i trade uh, just because i am uh, networking with people who have different ages and some of the ages like any are some of the not only ages in terms of like this kind of ages but the tactics uh, like any i started using this tactics of 80 20 or peeling a position and now it has become very popular amongst various traders right and various traders who came in through stock we they came they adopted they made a change to their own strategies and it became a mainstream kind of a way of trading for many traders now right uh, similarly this news plays is something the ntrt mtrt uh, kind of a methodology which i done has become mainstream because the traders talk to each other successful traders talk to successful traders uh, you socialize with other traders and you pick up edges so i picked up a lot of edges uh, from other people and systematically built on an edge if i like that edge or if i see that edge has something and whenever we have this advanced bootcamp uh, which happens once in 5 years uh, you develop lot of you discover lot of edges because the people who are coming for the advanced bootcamp the condition for they coming is like they are going to bring something to the table that is why they are going to get somebody else's edge right so so many ages have been discovered like anticipation is not my uh, original idea that is register uh, uh, age so i discovered ages by uh, not by only systematic uh, this thing but just by being around with traders who are successful right mm mm-hmm. oh, that's very interesting uh um... And and speaking on having all those edges, there's something that you developed that was of the utmost importance when market conditions change, and that is market monitor. Because mm-hmm. you initially talked about your beginning time in trading, you were telling us that you would have massive uh, gains in your P and L, and then you'd give it back to the market, mm-hmm. and you realized strategies work have they have a specific time and place. So tell us about how you developed a market monitor and how that completely changed your trading. Mhm. Uh so in the like and once I discovered the, these edges of episodic pivot and momentum burst and when I started trading at that time I didn't had this idea that uh, like you know the market goes through phases where your edge works and it doesn't work and uh, and I'm a very aggressive trader I take big risk. So I used to have big roller coaster rides in my uh, equity curve and it happened two or three times when i ran up my account 140 150 and then ended up doing up 50 60% of that gain so when it happened third time uh, i have a rule in my life that if something happens again and again you should try and find a solution so i started systematically looking for a solution as to what is it that is can be done to time this thing better or identify a regime in which your age is working and uh, when i did like and i started looking at what people are using what institutions are using what mutual funds are using hedge funds are using so that then i found that you look at most of the good timing models in the market which are used are based on market breadth so i created a market breadth uh, kind of a tracking mechanism for my own trading uh, which was basically to answer the question you look are breakouts likely to work what conditions and then if the conditions are there then i'm going to use so i developed this market monitor and then when i developed this market monitor for my for my own trading and after a few years when i started the public site and all i started publishing the data and in the process of doing that i developed edges around market monitor itself like one of the edges which i tried which we are aware of is around corona ke lemonade strategy and that edge has completely come out of the market monitor right and basically because it allows me to have corona ke without having a drawdown right Uh, so that started as a idea to put as a filter on top of my trading uh, to 
make sure that like I don't trade in unfavorable time periods or I change my tactics in unfavorable time period when edges are not working. Now subsequently, market monitor is one of the input in developing situational awareness. I have a more refined situational awareness model compared to what I was doing say 20 years ago. And market monitor is one of the input that I have 20% study and I have like an, uh, other studies which have added more uh, qualitative input into this particular model to make a decision where that's why like you know, so many people were getting chopped uh, crazily this year right and I was like you know, every day I was telling that look and this is not the period where these methods are going to work and I just avoided all the uh, drawdowns similarly like you know, when after the COVID when the party started getting over um, the market monitor signaled that and as a result I managed to keep all the gains from my one of the biggest best uh, years in uh, trending in, uh, of uh, uh, during the COVID-19 time, right? Because uh, there is a the market monitor is a framework of thinking, right? The exact figures and the colors and all is not really what it is. It is a framework of thinking, which essentially tells you where money is coming in or not coming in into the market and whether your breakout kind of methods and anticipation kind of methods are going to work or not going to work and when reversal kind of methods are likely to work. No, that, and that is a very helpful tool that a lot of people don't have, especially beginner traders. They just jump into the market every day and they buy and sell stocks without a clue of what is likely the tendency of the market. And alongside mar uh, Market Monitor, uh, there's something called SA that you popular popularize mm -hmm. very heavily. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what SA is alongside uh, mar uh, Market Monitor? Yeah, uh, so situational awareness, SA is like situational awareness. Uh, uh, situational awareness or SA as it is called uh, was popularized as a concept or it is originated in the uh, US Air Force. So in the US Air Force, and during the Vietnam War, uh, they were losing a lot of planes because the pilots who were flying and they were young pilots, many of them like and drafted into and they were bored out in life and all. So they were losing situational awareness or they're losing the uh, idea of what planes are around them or where they are flying or what is the danger and all. So uh, the US Air Force created a program a training program for pilots which is called a situational awareness or uh, the actual thing is called UDA which is uh, observe, orient, decide and act. It's a UDA network basically which is uh, like and now the situational awareness model uh, is something which is used by commercial pilots in all airlines. So I was aware of situational awareness as a concept and uh, the methodology because when I worked for FedEx in India, the FedEx franchise in India, we are flying three planes, cargo planes in the night. And we used to have a situational awareness meeting every before every flight, right? And where you look at what is the ground condition, what is the fog likely to be, where is the alternative airport, how much fuel you are carrying, what kind of cargo. And then accordingly, you have a ta tactical plan, strategic plan in case something happens. So you're always going into a flight with a situational awareness. And when the pilot loses situational awareness, that's when accidents happen, which is a demonstrated facts in the airline industry. So situational awareness is a risk mitigation strategy. So when I started thinking in trading, you look, uh, it's the same thing, right? And every day I'm taking millions of dollars of risk and I want to mitigate the risk. So to mitigate the risk, situational awareness is the concept, which is what are the methodology which I use. So every day morning, I when I come to the office, I generate my situational awareness, which essentially answers some questions as to what kind of a condition we are in market condition, what kind of methods are likely to work, is it the time to be very aggressive in terms of taking profit?